This show is brought to you by Imperial Yeast. You hear us gushing over Imperial Yeast all the time, and that's because their yeast performs for us in every batch we brew. Imperial Yeast is adored by commercial breweries and home brewers alike. Their Pitchrite pouches are jam-packed with 200 billion fresh yeast cells guaranteed to deliver flawless, fast fermentations every time. Imperial Yeast strains are grown by a team of pro brewers and home brewers in Portland, Oregon, who live to help brewers learn more and ferment better. Join our recipe receiving Patreon groups and get a free upgrade to premium Imperial Yeast with every recipe kit that ships out to you. Learn more at patreon.com forward slash homebrew happy hour and come brew with us. Entertaining shows with content that spreads information and sparks discourse throughout the community. This is the Pearl Media Network. And welcome to the Homebrew Happy Hour. This is the show where we supply the answers to your homebrewing questions and discuss all things related to craft beer. If you have a question you'd like us to discuss on a future episode, you can go to homebrewhappyhour.com and click on the submit a question link at the top of the page. Or now you can call or text them in by using 325 325- 305-6107. I am your host, Joshua Stubing. Today, I am joined by the Director of Operations at cmbecker.com. Right down there, Mr. James Carlson, <laughs> as well as the President, Chief Keg Washer. I think you need a haircut, man. Oh, right over there, Miss, right over there, Mr. Todd Burns. Gentlemen, how are y'all doing today? Good, except you're pointing the wrong direction. I, <clears throat> yeah, I see everybody up. above me, so... Oh, <laughs> Wait, uh, you could change your view. There's gallery view. There's speaker view. We, um, I'd like to say we're trendsetters. You know, we've been doing Zoom since before Zoom was cool. Now everybody and their mothers. And the bad part about that is because Zoom just pushed out. So with all good, let me cut the music. We don't need the music for this. Um, with all good things come backlash because people get bored or legitimate backlash, whatever. Maybe it was a legitimate backlash on Zoom, but they did all these security updates because now that everybody's using Zoom, apparently uh, they're, they're calling it Zoom bombing, where people were able to randomly hop in to a call, like a like a conference call, and just, you know, baba booey, baba booey, or whatever, Howard Stern. <laughs> 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 and... <laughs> And so they put on all these things. So y'all, like, I was, I was texting Todd all pissed off, like, "Why aren't you on right now?" And he's like, "You have to let me in. It won't <laughs> let me join if you don't give me permission." And he enunciates like that. And so he, he did. He, I was like, "What? That's new." That's because you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's idiot, idiot, idiot. Like that, my German, yes, like our German friends will call me. Um, so I was like, "That's weird." And then, sure enough, I. Uh, I, I tried to capture it. We use this free program called OBS to capture the meeting so I could do all these cool overlays, which are none of them are working now because they're not part of the OBS. So this is this is just going wonderful today. We don't have any of our cool high tech, like you don't see my lower thirds or anything while we're live doing it, but it's whatever. We'll figure it out. It's been a crazy week. If, I, I see. I would have never noticed. Like I didn't even, I don't, it doesn't look any different to me. Well, because that's the whole point. I'm. I'm recording it like we're producing it. And so I'll put the overlays. You don't see them on your end because I'm not like screen sharing. They're, they're overlays. And technically, I think I could figure out how to do it if I drag this and I put it there. And then let but me if, see here. If, if that's just, if, hey! If everybody's going to see okay. them anyway, No, they, No, they, they're going to see it now because I did make it work. Oh, see? That was a oh, three okay. second. That was one of the quickest I've ever fixed anything, Todd. You have to give me some credit. I uh, You did a good job. <laughs> That was so insincere. It has been a very, very, very crazy week. Let's start first off with an update. Mr. Burns, uh, your father uh, uh, had some heart issues. He, yes. The man works himself every day. And I think earlier in the week, or was it last week, he was like, my chest kind of hurts. And y'all, y'all finally were like, well, Dad, I, don't, I think that's not normal. Where he would have just been like, no, 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 it probably hurts because I just hauled 5,000 tons of hay and I chopped wood for a winter that's not coming for another nine months and I uh, <laughs> built it. Yes, a- yes, but winter is coming. My yeah, but winter is coming. <laughs> so my dad always says, that's where they got that. From your dad. 
<laughs> yeah, they got it from my dad. Yeah. So update us though. He, you, you took him in, and that's we didn't do a recipe recap because you've been busy with him. How how's your pop doing? Yeah, he's doing much better. They uh, had a little issue getting the stint in, and in the second try, they were able to get it in, and now he seems like he's doing a lot better. So wonderful. It was it was yeah. uh, artery blockage is why they needed a stint, or I think that's why they do stints. Yeah, because it's blocked. Uh, it won't, uh, flow. I should probably know more about it, but <laughs> they said, yeah. Cause they said it was like 90 something percent blocked. Oh wow. gosh. That's terrifying to me. Mm-hmm. Oh, only cause it's like my future. Well, one, not your, your dad's living way longer than I'm going to. I've accepted that your, your dad took way better care of himself over his life. I'm, I just had a bowl of cereal, my second of the day. And it's not the good cereal. It's like uh, lucky charms or something just total garbage, but I'm addicted to sugar, but uh, I should probably learn this stuff too. But yeah, the, the heart stuff, I'm glad he's okay. And he, you just picked him up yesterday, didn't you? I did. Yes. He's back home and, and he, he did, who had to tell him that he can't go back to manual labor immediately. Was it you or, or your uh, mom? The nurse mentioned that he's not supposed to do anything for until the weekend because the, where the incisions they had to make uh, could open up. So <clears throat> my dad, you know. Don't do anything until the weekend meets to my dad. Don't do anything until the weekend. And then you can do whatever you want. And then you can do whatever you want. Yeah. I'm going to have to work on that. And make sure your, is your mom giving him grace? Because I know, uh, all he has to do now is bother her. So yes. Yeah. They, uh, well, I went over there yesterday and they said it was like a, like a second honeymoon at the house. (laughs) They're all quarantined in together for the last two months and. Uh, yeah, it's like a nice second honeymoon with the two lovebirds with bloody little beaks. <laughs> oh my goodness. I can't only imagine. Um, so yeah, we're, we're super glad he's doing good. We, we just figured I, I, I was gonna squeeze in a, a back to back recording today doing the uh, us doing this show and doing recipe recap but we're like you know we can it, it'll be okay and also too we need our beer to stretch out as much as we can that we're sending each other because right now i have w- w- the schwartz beer you sent and a bo- yep. and a bomber which i'm looking i'm really looking forward to opening it and trying it but i'm not sure uh i have a kolsch finishing up that i'm going to send y'all next week you said james what was the beer i totally forgot that you're going to be able to ship me the fast beer Fast beer. That's right. And really, was that a beer? Like, I know when we brewed it and why we brewed it, are we, is it a cardinal sin to open it in April? Is that going to be okay? Are there going to be people complaining that we're not saving it for Oktoberfest? No, no, we brewed it. We're going to drink it. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. That's a, yeah. Those people want to wait till October. They should brew their own damn fest beer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or brew it every month leading up to October and have a bunch yeah. of festivities. I'm looking so for, uh, and I have another, I have that, uh, the, my right. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yep. You, got, you got a keg of mine that stalled out that we had to finish out finishing. I mean, finish out finishing. We had to have it finish out at room temp. So I have a feeling yours is going to be a lot better than mine. So we, so we could, uh, uh, we could send a bottle of each to you, Josh. And we could compare the two where we had to uh, try to rescue one of them. Yeah, I would love that. I, are you are you on the podcast? You look like you're doing something else. <laughs> you, I was texting I was texting Zach. I was like, tell Vilver or whatever that is to be quiet. That's all I hear. Poor James. I, because I haven't been back up there, I haven't been able to set him up in that other office. And I have the, the foam paneling and stuff I had shipped to me because it was like Oh, what we'll do is I'll bring it with me next time I come up. And then COVID-19 happened and I haven't been up. So uh, that didn't end up being a good choice to do. But it's been interesting uh, how we've had to adapt. Like I know James and his crew have been helping out with orders a ton more than ever yep. before. It's it's a good way that we're adapting. Todd's implemented. I know I'm, I'm is this old hat. We've gone over it, but I just want to recap again. Uh, all the, all the hygienic and social distancing policies that you've implemented up there, Todd, you gave every, this is what I'm impressed with. And I don't think people, I don't think I said it enough or emphasized it enough. The first time we talked about it. you gave everyone respirator masks, like, um, the in, the N95 ones, right? Yeah, I had some here. Uh, you know, we use them all the time for uh, when we're doing you know, grinding grain or doing anything like that. So uh, we actually use them on a regular basis. 
Hey, yeah. James, if you want to tell them to be quiet, I, I don't. It's fine. If oh, no, no, no. <laughs> is it the tape? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All I hear is. Kr- <laughs> it's fine. I think that's Lana getting a shipment ready. Oh no! See, oh. they're working. You're good. I'll, I'll get yeah. over. That's why I was subtle and texted Zach. Because one, I didn't want to stop it because I'm not editing this out because I'm lazy. But also because it wasn't. It's not that big a deal. It's not like some episodes. You know, we've. Uh, I think I got to get Jim Miller back on the show, especially because that one. That's the. That's the one episode people always like. I love Jim. It was a great episode. What was that noise? Because he had a bottle. <laughs> this was before the video days. He had a bottle in his hand, a plastic water bottle, and he didn't monitor his microphone because he was calling in from a phone. And so, all, you know, every now and then you hear. No, oh, the crinkle of the, the crinkle s- of the squeezing bo- the yeah, side. Yeah, and then yeah. I was too starstruck to be like. Mr. Miller, uh, could you stop uh, doing that on the? I was I was just enthralled. Like I'm talking to Jim Miller. I've been following this guy since WEC. Man, this is nuts. But so I'm not supposed to do this. Oh, I hate you, Todd. Yeah, of course you have a beer can lying around your desk. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see. Well, that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, who doesn't have a beer can lying around their desk? The gym I train at's been doing Zoom, uh, you know, workouts for everybody, and yeah. I had a beer. I had the rest of one of your beers lying around next to it, and my, my wife came in, and I'm I'm sitting there sweating and drinking. She goes, "I thought you were working out." I was like, "It's over. I am. I, I did work out." The hint. That's great. Why I'm having yeah, the beer now? Sometimes when I work a little in the evenings, I'll have a beer here at the desk. So I'm not judging you. I got beer in my fridge. Finally, I have. I I yeah. I, I don't know if I updated because of the kombucha situation. I needed a fridge. So right before all the craziness happened, I received my fridge. A little mini fridge, and uh, it, now it's full of beer. Is what I have in it now. Well, so. the, for the rest to be recap, it sounds like right now we have a month's worth of beer, so we should be pretty good, huh? We, we should. The, the, the beer, the Maybach I have in there, will um, it should be done in two or three weeks. It's clarifying, so that gives us four beers. So somebody's gonna have to brew fairly soon, though. Well, I am. You know? I'm. I'm brewing the the recipe kit for this month for our Patreon members. Uh, the qualifying ones at the thirty five dollar level, and then the fifty dollar level where you get it every month is a session IPA called Happy Little Hops from Homebrew Supply. I have that kit. I received it thanks to the crew at Joe and his guys at Homebrew Supply and Care Connection. Obviously, I will be brewing that soon. Uh, I'm gonna get the equipment, all my stuffs at my pop. So I'm gonna just a big kettle because it's an extract kit, and uh, I'll I'll do a stove top. I'm gonna capture it on video, and and uh, James, I'm pretty confident I can turn that one around fairly quick, right? I'm yeah. using flagship from Imperial. That should be. Uh, oh, you should be fine. Yeah, I think. Oh, was- and I've got that brown ale too. That's uh, that was an extract that we haven't done yet. So we've got six beers in. Yeah, so we're good. We we just have to figure the, yeah. figure the logistics of getting it to each other, and uh, you know, I'll like just shipping it. Like I'll, I'll just leave it at that, man. I was leaving. I was trying to be ambiguous, okay? Because I don't know <laughs> what what our liabilities are when we talk about shipping stuff. But anyway, I, I'm looking forward to receiving it. It's just kind of been a, uh, if I'm trying to find some silver lining in all this, it's been interesting how we've been adapting and, uh, being, you know, using technology to still interact and do the show. Fortunately, we've been doing the show like this forever. So I tried to find an excuse to stop doing the podcast again, but I I couldn't find a good one. And people knew if we stopped doing this show weekly, it's going to happen like the old times where one month. Then two months, and then a year goes by, and then James will join back and go, "Why are you doing the show anymore?" And then <laughs> was we'll it back. a year, Hyatt? It was. It was eight months. It was. Wow. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We we don't talk about that. Uh, <laughs> no, people love to talk about it, and I I love to say uh, when I see bad iTunes reviews come in or something like, "Oh, that was from the old days," and they'll say, "No, the review said January 2020." I was like, "No, no, 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 no. That iTunes must be dating it wrong." <laughs> But anyway, before we get to the questions a little bit more, like I said, our Patreon recipe kits uh, going out. Happy Little Hop Session IPA. It's a delicious recipe. Joe swears by it. Uh, we haven't had an IPA on. I don't believe we've done an IPA recipe yet. Uh, we may have. For, uh, no, we did a pale. We did a juicy pale, but we haven't done an IPA, I don't believe. And so that's oh. going to be... I want to do one. I should brew that. I, I want to do uh, the happy little hype IPA. Well, why don't like we? Oh, you know what? Well, what? I know, James, I don't want to put you, Johnny, on the spot. If you have time to brew it, too, why don't we, for a future res- uh, episode of Recipe Recap, we can send each other ours and, and compare and contrast 
talk about our brew days and how he's each not, one. He's not going to be very excited about brewing an IPA. <laughs> I dude. know that's what. <laughs> James. <laughs> no. Oh, then we no. have. Hey, listen, James. Let me let me let me sell this to you better than Josh. <laughs> then we'd have forty-five gallons of IPA. Oh God. <laughs> no, t- I'm only doing five. You're, oh wait, oh, five? Who does five? Because really? That's the extract recipe. I can't all grain brew it right now. I could, but where is your cooler brew? Uh, at my dad's. It's at my dad's, and um, he is right now. We so you know we are practicing social distancing, and we will have him take it to your trunk and put it in your trunk while you stand at a distance. Yeah, no, I'm saying I could do that, but I but the recipe kit I had sent for the Happy Little Hops is a five gallon recipe kit anyway, so I can't. Oh, I got you. I, I can't you. brew that in a ten gallon. I agree with you. I how depending on how long this goes, I'm eventually going to get the cooler brew, or I'll just go to his house and because you know you've been to his property. It's very easy to social distance on his property, and so yeah, absolutely. I, I'm not I'm not super worried about that. My parents are being very good for anyone who wants to know my business. They're not leaving the house. We're doing very good. We're not as well. We are very much in support of and following what our entities are telling us are to do. So we are you know staying home. And if y'all saw what I'm wearing, I'm, I'm business up top and party down south. So. <laughs> 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 Please don't show us. So. Uh, I promise you, I, I'm not. Be, I'm, I'm embarrassed. I would do it if it was funny, but it's not funny. It's embarrassing. But anyway, so yes, the Patreon recipe kit, Happy Little Hops. We're going to have that uh, shipping out tomorrow, I was told. So Friday the 10th, it'll go out if you are a qualified member of our Patreon, which is at patreon.com forward slash homebrew happy hour. And then also the April giveaway is for a CM Becker cleaning and sanitizing kit. And we're throwing in a bottle of the QA disinfectant. Real quick, Todd, do we do a recap? We talked about it a little bit last week. The QA, which we had for sale, went out of sale in like an hour. And then no, we have it now. We just got yep. some in today. Yep. In fact, it, you, you know that, right? I do. And and uh, I told your sales lead, Zach, your service and sales lead, that he could tell me once all the pre orders were done, how much we had left. And then we would put them back. No, up. I don't. I don't. They, I think we didn't have any pre-orders on this. We had just filled them all from the other six. Cases. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I see. Okay, then I yep. misunderstood him. Oh, then he probably thought I was an idiot, which is embarrassing when Zach he, thinks I you're an idiot. I just saw him. He, that's exactly what he said. So that's <laughs> funny that you mentioned that. Yeah, it's like I'm a mind reader. Okay, well, perfect. So at the point of us publishing this, which it's Thursday the 9th, this will be going out this evening or early af- or late afternoon, uh, they should be back for sale, right? But it's very limited quantity, too. Uh, well, but we're working on it. I mean, we, so you, should we tell people yes. the exciting news about next week's podcast? Yes, please do. <laughs> Uh, so Jonathan from National Chemical, who himself is a very big home brewer and a very good home brewer, from what I understand, is going to be on the podcast, and he's going to talk about sanitizers. He's going to talk a little, little about the QA because that's kind of on everybody's mind right now. But he's also going to talk about different types of cleaners and what they're good for, and different types of sanitizers, and kind of you know where one shines and maybe another one doesn't do as well in certain situations. So I think it'll be a really, really neat and informative podcast to have him tell us all about cleaning and sanitizing. Oh, yeah. It'll be cool. And I, I agree. And uh, James, I don't know if you, Todd was like, yeah, you've met him. You've met him. I had to look him up on Facebook. Sorry, John. I, I Facebook stalked you. But I was like, oh, yeah, we see him every year at HomebrewCon. So I don't know if you remember him by name, James, but he's definitely been around us at HomebrewCon. Um, mm-hmm. Specifically, the one in Minnesota, I think he came by to say hi to Rick, and Rick introduced us. I guess all those chemical guys are all friends with each other. Oh, they'd have to be. Yeah, yeah. They, they all know each other. What, what a, I mean, I know we know people through how niche homebrewing is. I, uh, chemical supplies has to be pretty niche, too. So. They all know each other. But yes, yeah, so he that is next week's episode. We are giving away a cleaning and sanitizing kit with a bottle of QA disinfectant, which is not for your gear. It's for your home, guys. It is it is a COVID-19 CDC approved killer. So you uh it, it's great product. Mr. Burns was nice enough to give all his employees a bottle of it. And uh my wife's already used it, man. It's it, it mates a lot. That that bottle that um how many, I don't remember how 32 many, ounces. 32 ounce bottle mates a lot of, of the solution. So it should last. Yeah, it's a, so it's a tablespoon is, goes into 30, uh, 32 or wait a minute, wait a minute. Now I'm, I don't want to make a liar out of myself. Cause you know what? <laughs> All I've been doing is researching chemicals 
like for the last two days, I've been updating all the information on our website. So now they're all running together. It's less than that, I think. It's not, yeah, it's, it doesn't it's, take very much. Maybe like a teaspoon or something for the 32 ounce. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, I think. Well, uh, we'll, we'll find we'll, we'll, have one. <laughs> we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll put it back on there. We'll for put sure, it back but, on. It'll, yeah, it'll, we'll, we'll, it'll, all the right info will be there. But yeah, that's the giveaway. I already talked about the Happy Little Hops and it's shipping out using Flagship from Imperial. I think we're good to go. I have three questions for today's show, fellas. So starting off with question number one from our buddy Adam, use the submission form at homebrewhappyhour.com. Adam wrote, What is the easiest way to get your glasses beer clean at home? How do y'all clean your glasses if it differs? So, I, well, I should have asked you, I didn't think about this ahead of time and you would have had to disconnect your whole thing. My favorite way of cleaning glasses at home is what Todd has installed in his sink, which I don't even know the right retail word for that. What What is the mechanism? Just a glass cleaner? What do they call it? Oh, in it's, yeah, it's a glass cleaner. So it's, it's uh, got a brush in the middle. It's all self-contained. So it's got liquid in it and it's got a brush in the center. And it actually circulates water. You push down on it while you're kind of, it, for those of you that are watching on the video, you go up and down with a glass and twist it. And then you take it out and there's another part that you put it on and it sprays water all the way on the inside and on the outside. So you totally clean it, completely rinse it. And uh, it's much, much faster than washing it any other way. Yeah. So it's, it's absolutely fantastic. It's one of the best. In fact, James from CM Becker is going to be ordering some of those in the <laughs> soon. And we're going to, we're going to get those, uh, up available to, to multiple companies, including uh Keck connection, I believe. Right. Yeah. So we, that, that's exciting when we get that. Product that is well. exciting. I, cause I want one for my, again, for my dad's house and I haven't consulted him and this is how it typically happens where I just decide what I want to put in his home and then I find a spot, but every sink, that if you have a teaser or a kegerator, you have to have one of these. And I, I was so impressed when we went to the brow, the three of us, uh, the year that I got to go, which was 2018. 18. It was, and we walked by I forget, Adelphi. Is that, is that how you pronounce the company? Or I forget what how you pronounce it, but they had it all on display. And we had one in our booth, obviously. Uh, CMB Schankenlagen booth had it to where I was – volunteering to serve out beer just for being able to be like, Oh yeah, let me take the glass for you. <laughs> How cool of an experience it was now for us plebs who don't have that kind of access. James, do you, besides just a normal, like a uh, uh, soap and water kind of clean and rinse, is there anything special yeah, you do for your beer I just glasses? Do, I used, I'm a Dawn fanatic. So that's all I keep for hand dish so, or dish soap is Dawn. I, I would say go to Walmart and get a good, good glass brush you don't ever want to try to clean up especially a, some of these beer glasses are really thin and uh, if you got hands like mine you don't want to put it in there and, and risk breaking the glass and cutting your hand so get a just get a bottle brush and fill the sink up with soapy uh, dish soap and re- wash and rinse you know another uh, another thing about that qa we were talking about earlier which by the way is uh two tablespoons per gallon so it would be half a tablespoon or eight milliliters for a 32 ounce spray bottle i I looked that up while we were talking (laughs) Uh, it's also listed as a as a sanitizer for glassware so it's it's specifically used in bars a lot for glassware oh i didn't you mean even before all this happened yeah before all this yeah yeah Yeah, it's a no rinse product product forever yeah so interesting and todd uh since you were talking i thought you were going to segue into this part, but I'll, I'll force you down it. You have always been the one to tell me that logoed beer glasses should never be run through the dishwasher. Well, it- okay. So I use a product called Lemmy Shine in my dishwasher. And the reason is we have very hard water at our house. When I lived in San Marcos, Texas, we also had very hard water. And it'll basically just make your glasses start to look yuck. Like it'll, uh, they look terrible because they're uh, they, they have obviously the calcium and mm-hmm. other minerals build up on the glass. Well, Lemmy Shine completely eliminates that problem, and it works great for your dishwasher. It also completely eliminates the logos. So if you wash your glasses two or three times in it, you will you will have nice beer glasses, and they'll be very sparkly, shiny, but they won't have logos on them anymore. So <laughs> it really depends on what you're using in your dishwasher and 
you know, what the uh, detergent is, what your water's like. Yeah, I my, my parents must have hard water because my I told my dad I because I usually I keep my my beer glasses here, but I also buy a bunch for him. And uh, one time you gave me like two fusion glasses. And so I was like, I don't need two here. I just need one. That's fine. And you gave me like two fruit glasses. Or remember that guy when we were at Cologne, he, we asked for him and he gave us two. So yeah. you ended up giving me the one he gave you. So I had two fruit glasses and I, or maybe it was the Peter's Kolsch. Either way, take them to my, take one to my dad. And one time I go over there and I'm like, I'm looking at the glasses like, why is the logo so faded? My mom's like, oh, it just came out of the dishwasher. It's clean. I was like, no. <laughs> it's so like I, I, I told my dad and I guess he didn't tell her or my mom didn't listen. Insert joke here about women not listening or whatever. But I was like, no, ma, you don't you don't wash in a dishwasher. Don't you listen to homebrew happy hour? She doesn't. Um, and we never, and she doesn't talk to you. And, and yeah, I, I always hand wash them. I think it, it's better to hand wash them. Yeah, and that well, that's what I that's what I do now, and I think that that's the rule of thumb. And and Adam, I don't know, you know, he just submitted this. So question. I'll tell Adam one more thing. I just get really anal retentive here. <laughs> uh, when I hand wash my glasses and I'm at my other sink, I I always I have an RO machine, so I always run RO water on them afterwards because <laughs> if you just rinse them in my regular water, the the calcium spots are all over them. So oh, that's getting very, very particular about your glassware when you run <laughs> yeah. RO water over it. You know it, what, so. though? Maybe Adam's one of those guys. I, I'm still frequently on the subreddit for beer or for home brewing, and nothing is more embarrassing. You pour your you pour your glass of beer, and you're showing it off to your to your peers online, but it has all the bubbles attached to the side, and they call it dirt, the Dirty Glass Mafia, DGM. Oh. <laughs> you're like, no, I just want to show you my beer. And like, that glass is filthy. Blah, 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 blah. They're not wrong, but, you know, they're probably not being nice about it. But anyways, Adam, thank you so much for submitting the question. Right now is a great time to remind y'all. Oh, hold on. Ah, got him. I've been having... I've been having gnats from the kombucha. Like I, they found their way into my home and started breeding or something. I don't know. Anyway, uh, audio only listeners are like, man, cool story. So uh, this is a great time to remind you if you submit a question to us at, ho- at homebrewhappyhour.com uh, or using 325-356-5204, we do send you a $25 gift card when we take your question on the show. So thank you, Adam. Check your inbox for that. Moving on to question number two came from Brian P., who also used the submission form at homebrewhappyhour.com. Brian wrote, love the, go- uh, love the show, guys. Josh, I know my name is spelled with a Y in it, but it is pronounced Brian since I know you have problems pronouncing names sometimes. Ha ha ha. Thanks, Brian. Uh, since we are all staying home. That, that was funny. I read that and I was like, <laughs> wow. It's not a lot of he just he wasn't giving you a lot of credit. Was no, he? and he's it's gonna he's gonna love it when I read the next person's name because there's multiple ways to pronounce the next person's name. But anyway, since we are all staying home, I decided to clean out my teaser lines. I guess it had been a while since they looked pretty stained. No mold, I don't think, but a hue is stained on the lines. Would you recommend I replace them all together, or is there some way I can clean them and make sure they're still good to serve out of? Do stains matter? Keep up the good work. I've never asked you, Todd, about about beer lines or James. I know with kegs, I have kegs that have stains in them from because they're 30... eight-year-old kids and i know you've reassured me over and over yeah man that those those are just stains uh, uh, imperfections in the the metal but it's not going to affect your beer and i've never noticed a difference in it but what about the lines is stain a sign that they gotta go uh you know the problem i have with stains and lines is it's, it means that you haven't been cleaned a lot in the past uh i've never I, I don't have any i haven't seen a lot of stains and lines unless they did get mold and then they cleaned it out and it, it was left. I, you know, I can't say for sure, but I mean, personally, I would replace the lines because it, it makes it very hard to clean it in the future. Cause you're always wondering, is that stained or is that grime or mold or something forming? So I would start fresh beer line is so cheap. I mean, it's, you know, it's, what is it? Uh, 50 cents or 75 cents a foot or something like 59 cents a foot. I mean, there's five feet of it. Uh, I would replace it, start fresh and then start cleaning your beer lines on a regular basis. Every, you know, every couple of weeks, uh, I literally mean every two weeks, but Josh would doesn't agree with me on that. But, uh, <laughs> you know, so we'll say two to two point every two to 2.5 weeks. How about that? 
So yeah, it's not I just me. J- James, have some input here. Help me out. Like, do you, do you <laughs> clean out your beer lines every two weeks? No, I'm guilty, just like everybody else that's got a draft system of not cleaning them near enough. Uh, but I agree with Todd. I would just replace the lines. It's too it's too cheap to try to mess with. And at one time, I had the same problem, and I went to the effort of putting twine through the hose and then tying a piece of wadding on the end of the twine to try to get the hose clean. And I stopped and thought, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> the hose is too cheap to go through this. Kind of crap. I love so. that though. Cause you're such an, <laughs> like, yeah, I know you're not an engineer, but you're an engineer, my friend. <laughs> like that is like, that is such a gangster move to be like, I, you know, I'm not going to do the math on what my time cost and I'm not yeah. going to do my, the math on what the product cost. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and just make uh, a mechanism with <laughs> like that. That's so, oh, uh, you're, you're right. You, up. you know, ta- uh, tap, right. I believe is who we bought them from. They make a brush for that. It's like a five foot long metal. And it's kind of like a gun cleaning brush, but yep. it's a softer material. And you run it through the whole line and run it back. And we, we got one one time, but I was like, oh, they, I don't, they were fairly expensive. And I was like, it, the brush is a lot more expensive than new line. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, it'd have to be a situation where you're cleaned a whole bunch of beer systems all the time. And you just need, wanted to brush through them, I guess. And Brian with a Y who uh, wrote in, it is a good reminder that now is a great time to do maintenance work on your setup guys. Like, uh, if you, you know, clean out those tags, uh, replace your beer lines, cl- take apart your faucets, soak them and, and clean them. And, uh, even if it's, you know, been a week or two weeks or whatever, which it probably hasn't. Most people listening are like, I've never done that before ever. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great time to do it now, guys. Uh, if, yeah. You know, I cleaned mine last week, but maybe I should clean them again today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just, uh, you have do you have beer do you have beer on tap right now in your fridge or no? Dude, I, I have I literally have three beers on tap and two beers in my keyser that I, I don't have any taps on right now. Uh, I have one tap on it. I should probably keg the other one. I have five kegs right now. I don't. I got so much beer that I, I'm having to drink extra. To, to try to dwindle, dwindle it down a little bit. So how come so. every time I come up there, you're like, oh, I don't have any beer for you on top. And the second this happens, you magically get five kegs of beer. Come well, on, Mr. Burns. So we had that huge hog hunt and, and everybody drank all the beer. Uh, and, but, uh, you know, I had brewed some and James had brewed some right before that happened. So uh, right after you left, the kegerator started getting beer back in it. So. Whatever. Oh, man. you know what? Also. You're not here every two weeks drinking half my damn beer. That's the other part. <laughs> what? I, not half of your beer? Come on. You make me sound like an alcoholic. I, I've not being on the road has been. I would just say binge drink. <laughs> <laughs> you said that with such a uh, care, like you care. I, I will say this, not being on the road. Funny enough, I always used to think, man, if I uh, being on the road is why I'm gaining weight because I eat out. Or when, <laughs> no, no, it turns out I'm just fat. And uh, I don't wait, it, taking away jujitsu has made me real fat. Look at this chin. Watch what watch what I can do with this chin. Like that's disgusting. I put a, I'm, well, I'm like I thought everybody could do that. <laughs> I'm damn that of course not James. James hasn't had a double chin in his life since maybe being an infant. If if you you may have been a tall, skinny infant too. I just assumed all babies were fat. But yeah, I've been skinny my whole life. Yes, <laughs> you poor thing. Uh but yes, Br- uh, Brian, thank you so much for submitting the question. And it is a good time, everyone, to do some maintenance work, take care of that stuff that you've been putting off. You you've always said you didn't have enough time to do it. I bet you have enough time now so last question of the show from you know you know would it help josh just to do like a 30 second explanation of how to clean your beer lines because i'd do that okay yeah okay nope. so all you have to do if you got a keg i mean you can use our beer line cleaning kit which works wonderful but if you if you have a keg that's empty you take some brew clean or some kind of a cleaner that you would uh, cleans line not caustic of course but a re, you know a powdered brew, uh, beer line cleaner mix it up with some hot water you just run it through each one of your taps, collecting it in a bucket. And then when you're finished, you shut the, the you uh, disconnect it from the keg. So your disconnects holding the liquid in the line. You take all your faucets off, take them apart, throw them in the bucket and just let everything sit for about an hour. Then you just put it back together, run the rest of the stuff that's in your keg through, put some clean water in the keg, run it through and voila, it's all clean. And then it really, it, the hour wait is the, biggest amount of time uh, the, the time on each side is maybe five minutes or something 
Nice. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. I'm just going to take that snippet out, and that'll be the Instagram video to promote this video. And, and the, <laughs> the answer yeah, to don't forget to rant. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So last question of the show came from and it, it, my pronunciation, I believe nine out of ten times. This is Louie, but it could be Lewis. <laughs> but Louie wrote into the show and he said, uh, fellas, I really enjoy the show. I haven't caught up completely since coronavirus has shut down my city, but my question is related to what's going on. My local homebrew supply shop announced that they are completely going out of business and they are selling things for very cheap. I have the opportunity to pick up bulk grains, bulk hops, and bulk yeast, but I'm not sure where my money is best spent. I do happen to have a chest freezer that I was going to convert into a teaser this year, and it has plenty of space to store things. Do you think I should buy whatever I can fit into my freezer, or are some things just not meant for long or cold storage? I look forward to hearing back from you. Prost, Luis. Luis, Louis. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's first say this from the top. It is a very unfortunate side effect what's going on. And James and I covered it a couple weeks ago, and we still stand behind. Guys, if you can, support your local shops, man. Uh, yeah. if Because a lot of them aren't going to be around. Uh, you know, they were already hurting, right? Like our industry has already kind of been tight for a while. And even though business is picking up for a lot of companies, when a brick and mortar who doesn't do the internet at all, and y'all listening to the show might go, Josh, who who doesn't do business on the internet? Guys, go to HomebrewCon and, and go to the state of the industry track and you will meet a ton of old school dudes who have been running their shop for 30 years who are like, yeah, the internet's a fad and, and they don't <laughs> do online business, unfortunately. So if that's your local home homebrew supply shop, I'm not suggesting just go out for the sake of going out. But if they do curbside pick up or something, give them a call and try because I've been getting tons of emails and it's so sad, uh, just like from Louie here about the, his, their supply shops closing down. So with all that spiel out of the way, uh, let's get to the actual question. I don't buy in bulk. I've never had to buy in bulk. I've never thought about buying in bulk. Mr. Carlson is my go-to for, hey, how can I store this or whatever? Because before you were with us, you were yeah. a home brewer still for many years, and mm -hmm. you would buy in bulk because it's cost-effective and cost-efficient. Yeah. So what what would you say to Louie about, uh, like, hey, whatever you're willing to spend, all that stuff stores well? Or what do you have some uh, tips or tricks for him? I would just say spin it all on grains because it stores a lot longer than hops or yeast because uh, you could freeze grains. That's what I do. Get you a freezer, fill it up with, with grains, and then you can you can portion out what you're going to brew the night before and let it set out because it really does need to thaw a little bit. It's hard on a grain mill if you're trying to run frozen grains through the mill. And Todd, uh, you've bought in bulk because you're a retailer, but have you ever bought in bulk for yourself? And do you have any insight for, for Louie? Well, so we, we do buy in bulk and, and we, uh, we keep our hops and our yeast refrigerated at all times. Uh, even, uh, even dry yeast will definitely benefit from being refrigerated, but, but it's not required as long as it's cool, it's probably fine. Or even the refrigerator, um, Grains, you could definitely freeze them. As James said, uh, they work very well frozen. Uh, you can freeze uh, hops, uh, hop pellets, you know, whatever type of hops you're buying. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty straightforward. It's like anything else that's going to last longer is if you freeze it. Uh, and, and it doesn't, I don't think it hurts any of the home brewing ingredients to freeze, except for yeast, of course. Don't freeze your liquid yeast. Uh, I say that. I've never actually tried to thaw out liquid <laughs> yeast and see if it works, but uh, yeah, you, you, you don't want to, you want to freeze uh, the grains. I mean, one of the problems that, that you might run into is if you, if you're buying in bulk to save money and you go and buy a whole bunch of grain and, and hops and stuff like that. I mean, if you, if you go out and spend $500 or $400 on a, on a freezer, it's, it's always possible that you're going to spend more money on the freezer than you would save by buying bulk. So I, I would just do the math and make sure it makes sense. Yeah. And I know I've not ever been in the situation to, again, to, to buy bulk, but I would imagine, um, I, I was going to ask James, he, he just stepped out real quick. So I'll just ask you. Dry yeast is one thing that James is always like, yes, always make sure you have like, like, uh, the O five, is like a standard and like you can't have enough of it for you. You might use it. And same with like DME. 
uh, is another thing that I've been told by James specifically. Yeah, you should always keep some on hand because, you know, you're going to need it at some point. Does DME, uh, will that store well frozen, like, for, uh, over the long period of time? Or I, I don't know. I've never frozen DME. I, I've always kept it fresh. Um, I, I don't know. DME is a strange substance because it – even it doesn't really store a really long time well because it starts to uh, it's kind of solidify. Uh, I, I like I said, I've never frozen it. James may have frozen it. Uh, what what was the other thing you asked me about? Uh, DME and dry yeast. Oh, dry yeast. You yeah, you could definitely you could. I mean, it stays good in the freezer. Most of the dry yeast have like a, a two to four year shelf life, I believe. It'll say right on the package. You know, this is when it's good until, and, uh, they're, they're very viable. I mean, as long as you keep them cool, I always keep my yeast. I, I bake bread and stuff too. And I always keep my yeast in the refrigerator. James, uh, you had stepped out, but do you have any insight on DME? You've always told me before to yeah, always have it you on can hand freeze DME. And, and it doesn't, uh, mess with the integrity mm. of it or, or whatever. No, cause, uh, uh, freezers are really good. If you think about it, it's a really good D de- can be a dehydrator cause it's taking all the moisture out of that enclosure uh if you've ever had ice cubes in a tray for very long you notice they'll evaporate away so you don't have that's the one em, enemy to uh dry malt extract is it's like a it's it's a it'll pull in any amount of humidity and it'll turn it into a brick yeah but if you've got a good nice cold freezer it'll stay it'll store very well wonderful so yes louis 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 uh, thank you for so low. No, it's not Lois because there's a U in there. I know how to pronounce some names. I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm again. I'm like 99 percent sure this is Louis, but Brian with a Y is making me question it now, and I'm never gonna not have people write in and not tell me how to pronounce their name. So this is gonna be fun. New. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be a Are fun. You talking about Brian? Yeah, but yeah, Brian. <laughs> Uh, thank you. Yeah. So Louie, <laughs> everybody, thank you so much. Final reminder that if you submit your question to homebrewhappyhour.com or using our number and we take it on air, we give you a $25 gift card. So thank you so much for submitting your questions. Fellas, that does it for this week. I appreciate your time. I'm looking forward to uh, one, getting that Kolsch done and, and sending it your way. I got also get the Blickman beer gun over to me. And then um, I'm looking forward to receiving more beer. I'm really looking. I was hoping we could fit in the shorts beer this week, but it just didn't make sense. But I'm really looking forward to that. And next week, having two episodes, we'll do a recipe recap and we'll do a, another weekly homebrew happy hour. So y'all have a great weekend, fellas. Thank you for joining me. Thank Thanks. you. And that will do it for this episode of the Homebrew Happy Hour. If you have a question you would like us to discuss on a future episode, you can go to homebrewhappyhour.com and click on the submit a question link at the top of the page. Or now you can call or text them in by using 325-305-6107. Thank you to our show sponsor, Imperial Yeast, for supporting us and the homebrewing community. Join any top tier of our Patreon community and get free premium liquid imperial yeast shipped out to you with your Patreon recipe kit. Get more information at patreon.com forward slash homebrew happy hour. On behalf of Todd Burns, James Carlson, and the Pearl Media Network, I'm Joshua Steubing. Thank you for listening. This program is made possible by the checkbook of Mr. Todd Burns and by contributions to our newly launched Patreon by viewers like you. Visit patreon.com forward slash homebrew happy hour and join our community. Thank you.